Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Maria Foskett. I'm the ISV Partner Marketing Manager for Sage, um, and I've been working with um, Zinc on obviously getting this webinar set up for yourselves. Um, today's webinar will be looking at how we can help you support your customers in automating their business processes. Um, now, before I introduce you to your pre presenters for today, um, I just want to let you know that this session is being recorded. Um, the link will be sent out to everybody afterwards, along with the contact details for the relevant presenters. Um, we will be running a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Um, but as we're going through um, the presentation, please add your questions into the chat window um, and then I'll read them out during the Q&A session at the end. Um, and that's all the housekeeping bits done. So now I'd like to introduce you to James Shaw, who's the Business Development Manager for Zinc. Um, and who will start off your webinar. So over to you, James. Hi, thanks, Maria. Hi. Uh, yes, I'm James. Um, I'm the Business Development Manager for Zinc. Um, we've got Adam on the line as well, who's going to be going through the software demo. Um, and today we're going to talk about the challenges that e-commerce businesses face um, and why they approach Zinc really to help them automate their business processes. Um, so the first thing really is that it's easy for Customers to shop around online, um, so the retailers need to keep customers they have. Um, and one way to do this is provide a fast, reliable service. The problem with this is that e-commerce is, is admin heavy. So that same information can be added to at least two or three systems. So, you know, in today's climate, everybody's looking to reduce admin uh, with people working from home, um, from different places, and working different hours. Um, so if you think about the e-commerce as, as a whole, they have a website, they have maybe a shipping provider or a WMS. So, you know, all that information is kind of causing an order bottleneck within the e-commerce process. So Zinc as a software by automating these process, because automate, automating the business processes will allow customers to improve or e-commerce businesses to improve customer experience, uh, to ship orders faster without a hold up with admin, uh, be more competitive, um, reduce abandoned baskets by allowing them to have the confidence in the processes to reduce that um, order to delivery time um, and save hours in time in admin task and also re reduce and remove data islands. Um, so just a, a bit about Zinc. Um, so Zinc's originally founded in 2002. Um, we have essentially 18 years experience across the team now. Uh, sorry, 18 years experience in, in integration and 50 years experience in robotic process automation across the whole team. Um, and Zinc Workflow is our software package that is essentially easy to configure, flexible to meet all of your customers' requirements, no matter how unique. Um, you know, Zinc as a software can, um, can pretty much perform any task that we can put in a business rule or a process in place. Um, we support over 1,000 integrations from small businesses that, that just sell on the likes of eBay or Amazon uh, to some leading brands. Um, and we support brands like, uh, you know, Oliver Bonus, uh, Wham, Smithies, uh, Stone Island, uh, just a few of the brands that, that we support. Um, so we'll just talk a bit more around these these kind of areas. So um, Wham or What More UK, they might be known as, they came to us as they were expanding rapidly, um, and they needed they, they realised that they needed invis, uh, investment in business automation uh, just to help cope with the, the sheer demand that they were getting with their with their plastic boxes and the and the orders that they were receiving. Um, so we worked with Wham um, on a number of phased projects. To deliver automation with a number of websites, EDI systems, um, with information flowing in and out of Sage 200. Um, we, at a later stage, we then automated their warehouse management system um, so they could further streamline the, the Sage 200. Um, and as a result, um, Zinc's now an integral part of them. Um, and one we've said, recently said that we saved 70% of admin across their, their finance and warehouse teams. So it's a uh, a huge reduction. Uh, then we've got T Pigs. Um, so T Pigs have been a customer for a while. We've uh, they joined us on Sage 50 and have recently, very recently, migrated to Sage 200. 
Um, we integrate a number of different sites for them for the US and the UK markets. Um, so that's one of them is built on Blue Bolt, which is a custom CMS, um, and the other one's on Shopify. Um, and as a result, they, they don't have any administration on, on taking kind of order processes. So, um, you know, they've cut their order to ship time down by a day just because just of the amount of items that they were selling. Um, and then we've got Rubber Road. So Rubber Road license video games um, and sell gaming merch. So when there's a new game release, they are under immense pressure to, to fulfill orders to companies like Game or HMV. Um, mainly for the fact that they can cash in on that buzz of, of the, the whole game release or the latest game releases. Um, and with Rubber Road, we automate their WMS system. It's, it's kind of mainly B2B orders. So we automate their WMS system. So all the information is flowing from, um, from Sage, like a single entry system. So they're getting their orders, they're dispatching their orders um, using best of breed software, essentially. So everything is, is scanned in and out and everything's updated to and from Sage. Um, and this is just what some of our customers have said. Um, so, you know, Ben Curtis, who was the head of e-commerce at Oliver Bonus, um, said that, you know, software performed amazingly during a record-breaking Black Friday. Um, that was two years ago, so I think they've even had a better one now. Um, and Ben, we integrated his Sage 50 and Magento. He, he tried several different integration platforms before he found us. Um, and since his founders, he's been a happy customer for eight years. Um, okay, so we're going to show you two different software packages today. Uh, so the first one is Zinc Workflow. Um, Zinc Workflow is a, a robotic process automation platform that allows you to build workflows with no code and AI algorithms that can automate any task um, or perform any business process. Um, so Zinc Workflow now has over 70 different connectors um, with over 700 preset kind of tasks and configurable tasks um, which can perform any any automation process or uh, for any industry or any industry vertical. Um, and then we are also going to show you um, our digital dashboard solution, Zinc Insights, which is essentially kind of a high view of data um, that allows kind of KPIs and to track against KPIs. So it's the idea of this is to, to provide a system that can drive that performance across the team. Um, and then we're just going to move on. To, oh, yeah, okay. So this is some of the software that we support. Um, we're just going to show you a snapshot of this today with WooCommerce. Uh, but if you see at the top left, there's a whole host of CRM integrations um, and they flow through down into kind of e-commerce. Um, so we support most kind of leading um, software packages, um, as well as more custom things. So we can do database integrations or integrate with you know, documents like CSV or, or XML um, to give your customers the kind of flexibility in, in terms of their integration. And you know, we, we can support most leading packages. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Adam now, who's going to run through the, the demonstration. Thanks, James. I'm just going to switch over to me as a presenter. Um, right, that's good. So um, what I'm going to show you here is the, um, the design area of Zinc Workflows. So this is where you would actually build the workflow itself. Um, so I've got a pre planned workflow that I've built here, but what I'll do is I'll just quickly run through some of the sort of the tasks and the connectors that we've got that let you build these workflows and what you can do with them. Um, so if I run through the tasks, um, James mentioned warehouse management solutions. We've got connectors for things like PeopleVox, um, ProSkew, ShipStation, which is a, a big US company who print uh, shipping labels and have agreements with a lot of um, shipping co companies. And then within each of these connectors, there are various different tasks. And it's a case of to build a workflow, you literally take the task and you can just drag and drop it into the workflow window to essentially build up a, a sort of like a program of tasks. But the idea behind this is you do this without doing any actual programming behind the scenes and you're not worrying about how to keep up with APIs and things like that because we do all of that for you. So uh, I'll run through some of the other ones. I'm not going to dwell on them too long because a lot of them are, tend to be sort of utility libraries and things like that which are used as part of other 
workflows. Um, so there's things for handling, you know, email. You, we've got things for sending emails or fetching emails. Uh, if you've got an email box that you want to pass and bring the orders into Sage 200, you could use the email repeated, basically pick up that email box and just process those emails. We've got connectors for things like FTP, SFTP, various other file transfer options. Um, we've got encryption algorithms in there, which will let you sort of encrypt it if you're sending it over any sort of unsecure network, such as email. Um, there are connectors to various different file-based formats, such as CSV files, which tend to be used quite a lot still. Um, we've got um, functions for handling Excel files, various different things for handling different file formats. We've got um, tasks to convert JSON to XML, XML to JSON for various different systems. Um, we've got transformer tasks which let you, let you transform data from one format to another, and I'll show you that when I go through the actual workflow itself. Um, e-commerce, we, we tend to support the kind of top 10 e-commerce platforms. Um, there are literally hundreds of e-commerce systems out there. Um, the big ones from our perspective in terms of the ones that um, we see customers using the most are Magento, Shopify, and WooCommerce. So they're the top three. Well, they're, they're our top three in terms of they're the customers that we have the most people using our product with that I use e-commerce for. Um, so I mentioned WooCommerce, that tends to be popular with a lot of digital design agencies, mainly because it's free. Uh, Magento is free, um, but you tend to need to want to go to Magento Enterprise before you get any sort of like high level functionality. So WooCommerce, for example, um, the part I'm going to be showing you today is using the export orders task within WooCommerce. Um, we also support connectivity to databases, and we've got things for connecting the ODBC databases, ODB database sources, SQL Server, um, SQL Lite even as well. Um, I think, yeah, there's a connector for VISE, which is the VAT verification service online. Um, we've got connectors for numerous different CRM systems, which you're probably aware of, things like Zoho, Web CRM, Sugar CRM, obviously Salesforce is probably the most popular one we integrate with. Um, still support Sage Act, a lot of people out there still using it, and various other ones. The one that's popular with a lot of IT companies, we've got a lot of customers using it, is ConnectWise. So we've got connectors for the two different ConnectWise APIs there. And some of you partners may actually use ConnectWise for your own internal sort of IT management. Um, on the accounting side of things, um, I'll skip all the other ones. We support Sage 200. Um, both on-premise and cloud. Um, Sage 50, we support Sage 50 UK and Sage 50 US, and we support Sage Business Cloud Accounting. And there's, you know, there's a huge list of tasks in there of everything that um, we can do for Sage 50 Business Cloud. Sage 50 UK has, and there's about probably 20, 30 tasks in there. Um, but these tasks include things like you can run reports, you can execute direct queries to the database. Um, you can sort of import invoices, import transactions. You can perform things like update ledgers and things like that. And again, on the Sage 200 side, we've got similar sort of thing. We've got various different export tasks, various import tasks. One thing I will say is a lot of our import tasks have kind of sort of expanded and grown and are not just a straightforward kind of, you know, file import thing where they'll just basically take a, a raw file and just drop it into Sage 50 or Sage 200. A lot of them have got built in sort of data processing business rules to handle things like dispatching of orders, printing of orders and things like that. So I'll run through what is essentially a very simple um, workflow. So here I've got I've got broken down into um, three different sections here. So the first section here is downloading WooCommerce orders. So I'll just close that bit up there because it's not really relevant to this. So essentially the task consists of you give it a connection to your WooCommerce site. Let me just move this down slightly. So I'm yeah, you give a connection to your WooCommerce site and you can set as many connections as you want. You just kind of go through the wizard. You give it the various different parameters which are available in the WooCommerce admin. So in my case, it wants a consumer key and a consumer secret. These are just, you know, it tells you where to get them from within WooCommerce there and it tell it how you're authenticating. Um, and then the various other things that are fairly obvious things like, do you want to export customers? Yes, no. How, what, how do you want to export the records? Do you want to export all of them or do you just want to export modified records? What order status do you want us to pick up? And what do you want, how many records do you want us to bring down in each page that we bring down? 
The next thing we do is we um, process the customers. So to do that, we need to do two things. We need to take the data that WooCommerce gave us and we need to convert it into a format that our Sage 200 connector is going to understand. So for that, we use something called an auto mapper. Um, and this is an auto mapper. So essentially this case is you pick the connector that you've used. So in my case, I'm using WooCommerce 3. And I've got orders coming in from WooCommerce 3, and I want that to go into Zinc's XML format, which is our proprietary XML format. And I want you to push it out to sales orders. And there's various different things within that auto map that you can configure. So, for example, I'm specifying I want them to go to 31100 in terms of the nominal code. If you want to get under the covers and you, you've got technical people on site that can handle it, you can jump to this and you can customize the entire mapping yourself. Obviously, you don't have to do that. We provide all the maps and things like this, but some people want to do fairly customized sort of um, tasks and sort of like manipulate data in ways that the standard auto mapper doesn't do. So the next thing it does is it will import the customers into CH200 and it's got things that you'd usually expect, like do you want it to auto generate the account reference? How long do you want the account reference to be? What sort of masks do you want to use? You could specify I wanted to use three alphas and three numbers and things like that. And it will sort of check to make sure that customer has not already been in there. And there's various different algorithms in the um, system which handle checking to see if a customer hasn't existed. It's got some fairly unique technology for checking to see if this is a new customer or an existing customer. Um, that's especially relevant when you're dealing with a system where you can't write back an account reference to. So for example, we integrate with eBay, which is a, obviously an online marketplace, and we can pull orders down from eBay via the API, but you can't write custom data back to eBay, eBay's database. So there has to be some way of storing some kind of a, a method of storing the information about that customer that allows us to recognize that customer again if they come through. Um, the next step is it processes the sales orders. So we've got a, a mapping there. And again, just use the auto mapper. And um, there's a few more things you need to specify on here because it needs to know uh, various things like do you want to go to a bank account? Do you want any nominal code processing? And again, we've got WooCommerce orders going to do this thing, XML sales orders. And then final thing is we want to import the data into Sage 200. There's a few more settings on here. I mentioned like there's quite a lot of sort of business automation rules around here. You can get it to auto acknowledge the order, auto dispatch the order, auto post the invoice, pr print the order of the invoice, print the packing list, etc. There's a lot of functionality which lets you sort of kind of like leverage um, a lot of the functionality within Citrus and automate it completely. So I will just quickly jump over to WooCommerce. I'll just check I'm logged out. Of WooCommerce, yeah, yeah. And I'll just I'll just back up. This is just a, a demo site um using some sort of demo data, and I'll just put a few items into the cart there. And you can see there, I've got four items in there. I'll go to the checkout and I'll put in um Bob something. Um something special, and I'll put in one thing called Street Seed Dress. Newcastle postcode is an E1. That's a phone number. Um, for that example, oops. For some of the zero service, so it's got an American keyboard set for some reason. So I've just been customer details and I'll just place that order. Um, oops, hang on. Missed something out there. Postcode. I haven't bothered with any credit card stuff because so it's just really a demo site. I just want to show you the process of placing an order. Um, so if I log into my WooCommerce backend, you will see if I go to WooCommerce orders, and there's obviously got my test orders, and I've got an order there. It's probably says it's on hold. If I then jump back over to the product and run the workflow, is it'll run through, so it'll basically process the orders, input them into Sage 200, and you can see it'll give you a full sort of rundown of what exactly happened. There's a full sort of history, you can get all the details of exactly what happened, how many records went in, how many records went out. So if you if you want to debug something, if something's going wrong, you can kind of literally drill into every bit of data and it will tell you what happened um, with that particular task, and it'll tell you, also there's my test run from earlier on the day, and you've got like full history of everything that happened. 
Um, that's all in sort of the, the internal database that the system stores to sort of hold information about what's been processed, what hasn't been processed. Uh, obviously, on things like a, an order processing system, you would not want it to reprocess the same order again. So it's got algorithms in there to handle that so that it doesn't reprocess the same order twice. So if I go over to Sage 200 and go to the sales order list, I should have an order in there somewhere. There it is there. There's my order for something special. There's the, the various products I added to that order. It's broken down the VAT, um, et cetera. And it should also create a new customer for me. So if I go into customers and I search for, I'll just do that. Okay, see there. Yeah, there's my customer account there. So I think I've just gone into transaction inquiry, but yeah, it's created the customer account on there as well. So you see, that's the order gone straight from WooCommerce. It's gone directly into Sage 200, and it's fully processed. And obviously, I could have configured that to do a lot more. I could have had it all to dispatch it, but I didn't want to go into too much detail on this demo, so I'll keep it fairly straightforward for you. So that's a sort of quick sort of whistle stop tour of the um, the Zinc workflow product and what it is, what it can do. I've really just covered the very, very top surface. Uh, there is a lot more under the hood in terms of what you can do. Um, it's got support for things like, you know, you've you've got connections, you've got like a pool set of connections, you create connections to any of the connectors in there. Once you create a connection, you then sort of use that connection with whatever tasks you're using. Um, it's got mappings, so if you want to create a new mapping, you can create a mapping to say, well, it's this stock code on this website and it's this stock code in Stitch 200. If you needed to map those fields out, you could do that. And there's facilities to import and export those into the product. Um, there's things like global variables, which I didn't use in this particular demo, but you can set variables for sort of standard values. Or you might have a sort of standard website address that you're pulling information from, or you might have a variable you want to use for a server address where you want to pick up files from, etc. So that's really the, the overview of that. So the next thing I'm going to show you, which I'll switch back to my dev machine, is, um, I'll just get rid of that. So we are currently in the sort of final stages of just finishing off a new product called Zinc Insights. And essentially it is a sort of like a dashboard product, essentially lets you get a sort of 30,000 foot view of where things are at. Jim sort of said, you know, it's quite good in terms of if you want to sort of like give your sales team some targets and have them sort of like have a, a visible view of what's going on. I mean, we use it internally ourselves. We've got like all of our, what our turnover is, how many customers we've got, how many support tickets are outstanding and things like that. So in order to set the dashboard, uh, one of the goals was to, with this product was to literally make it as simple as possible. So you create a new dashboard, you literally just double click or drag over a dashboard here. And then actually, let me just do a new one because that's an existing one. Right, let's do a new one. Let me see. New dashboard. Right, so I'll do a Sage 50 dashboard because it's on my development machine and I don't have Sage 200. So a blank dashboard just looks like that. It doesn't know what's in it yet. There's dashboards for Sage 200, Sage 50, um, Salesforce, Sugar CRM, and various databases. And we can also pull XML data sources as well. There may be a couple more extra ones going there um, as we progress uh, towards the release of it. So on a dashboard, you literally, I'll just change the dark theme. I'll click on that. And I've got various different um, sort of dashboard sort of um, modules that I can drop on there. So I am gonna drop on um, total day to date, month to date, and year to date. So I've got three things there. I can say, okay, the daily target is 1,000 and the monthly target is, let's say it's 10,000 and the annual target is 100,000. And you can also, let's say I want to do a custom query and let's say it's um, total projects. If you want to, you can actually execute direct SQL in here. Um, select count of name from project. So that's the project table in Sage 50. So if I just save this out, and I'll call it my demo. And if I save that, run the workflow. And then if I click on preview, that's what my dashboard looks like. So I've just put four elements on there to give you an idea, but 
it's brought through the sort of invoiced uh, day to date. So that's one invoice I put in the day. What we've done month to date, and then what we've done sort of year to date. Uh, it's summed up the total projects there, but that could be anything you like. It could you could have um, you know John sales figures, Mary sales figures on there, whatever you want. Um, our plans are to sort of like have it so you can. Um, they'll also sort of we're going to crowdsource in the queries so allow people to publish queries to a repository and then they'll be shown up in here if they're marked as a community uh, query um obviously we will only allow to do read-only queries we won't permit things that would modify the database because this is purely a read-only view and then obviously what it does is um yeah the concept behind this is you run it in a browser full screen like that so that um that's what ours looks like pretty much in the office we've got a couple of these around dot the, around the office and you can just have your dashboards running um, in a browser um, on your network and you can pick up a file from an FTP site or wherever you wish. So if I go back to the dashboard on the output settings, you can configure to just output the file to a local network folder or to output the file to a, an FTP server. So that's the dashboards product. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, you can also drop on multiple dashboards. So let's say you want to have um, a Salesforce dashboard on there. What it will do is it will rotate between the dashboards. If you if you build up a dashboard on such as Sage 50 and Salesforce, it will rotate between them over a set period. Um, I don't think I can demo it because I haven't got any Salesforce credentials to demo it with, but um, essentially you just drag in whatever items you wanted from the Salesforce set of uh, dashboard items um, and build it up from there so that's the demo over i will pass back to james to finish off with the slides and uh, thanks for your time guys thanks adam so we talked about saving administration and, and the task this is kind of an example of the return on investment that companies could save <clears throat> especially with you know people trying to save the, the time that they're trying to save so you know if they're using sage 200 with just 50 orders a day I mean, staff costs are around about 15 pounds an hour um, and it's taking three minutes to process an order by using zinc you know they, they're looking at return on investment over three years around about thirty thousand. so that's kind of a an idea of the amount of extra roi you can set you can add to a sage 200 implementation um it's something that you know you can share with your customers um so it's like partner benefits so there's we've got a great partner scheme to to kind of help bring you on board and um you know we'll do anything to support you in getting up and running for the first few projects and, and moving forwards as well um but essentially you know it's uh you know we, we want to help your customers and we want to help you sell sales 200. Um, and you know this is some of our partners i think there's some of you on today and um, so thanks for thanks for coming along thanks for attending um and have we got any questions at all thanks james yeah we've got um we've got a few so um i'll just start so um first question um why should um they choose zinc over any other company with an integration platform Ooh, good question um, so Zinc's really flexible. Um, you know, it's been described as the Rolls Royce of integration software by one of our new partners. Um, you know, it allows you to automate more tasks than just you know picking up a file or moving files from one place to another. It's you know, it's got business rules, business logic, and essentially AI type integration. Um, so it's there to to help streamline and support more businesses. Great, thank you. Um, next question: How quick is it to get a customer up and running? So, come to implementation. Uh, yeah, I mean, our projects normally take anywhere between two to six weeks, depending on customer feedback. It is possible to do it quicker. Um, I mean, if you're going through an implementation of Sage 200, you've got your, you've got somebody on site there, um, you know, you'll be able to get it up and running in in no time at all, really. Great um do you integrate crm software is the next question yeah we, we've got a whole suite of crm software um you know so the main ones are probably salesforce and um, zoho is a, is a big popular one and sugar are the, the main ones that we support we've also got kind of some small unique ones uh, i think adam touched on connectwise yeah. you know, which is a you know a psa software that probably a lot of sage partners could be using 
Um, so, you know, we support all of those as well. Great, thank you. Um, and I've got one more question. So what do you do if a customer wants to connect a bespoke system? OK, so there's a number of different ways we can do that. So uh, we talked briefly on the file softwares that we support. Um, so we can work with, uh, you know, a bespoke software provider or somebody who's built an internal system to produce files in, in formats that Zinc can collect um, and then can process that within Sage. Um, either that or we can write, you know, custom scripts or custom database queries to, to help them perform the, the integration that they need. Great. Um, I've just had another question come in as well. So um, what are its advantages over MS Power Automate? It's a lot more powerful than MS Power Automate. Um, the, the, the MS Power Automate tends to sit along the same sort of side as things like Zapier um, and a lot of these kind of sort of very high level tools. It's which are fine for just like a very straightforward integration and like you know I would no way put them down. They're great products, but it's what we tend to find and th the reason why we um, sort of have the product we have is that. Um, Customers tend to sort of say, right, so I want to just bring orders down from X to Y, um, and that's all I need to do. And um, then they start going, right, that's great, it does that. Now, can I have it also do this, and can I also do that? They start sort of growing the scope of what they originally wanted because they've just discovered that it can do A, I want it now to do B and C. What we find with things like Zapier, we've had customers um, on another accounting platform come over to us from Zapier purely because they can't do what they want to do on Zapier. We've never had any com companies come across from MS Power Automate. I don't know how many people are using it. Um, I know Sage have a module in the, uh, the Microsoft product um, that's seen more around sort of like processing of workflows rather than actual data integration. So it's kind of like sending an email off via Outlook to get approval for a purchase order over a thousand pound. So it's it, it's a different product. Our our product is once you build a workflow, you would have that workflow execute in the background, and it it there's no user interaction with it. And I don't know if that does answer your question. Happy to chat about it offline if you want to have a chat about any specifics. Yeah, I can pass the details over to you, um, Adam, not a problem. Okay, um, I think that's it for questions, unless anybody has got any more. Mm. No, okay, well, um, I will be sending around the recording afterwards um, and the contact details for Adam and James. So if anybody's got any questions they want to ask them directly, um, feel free to. Um, Thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, give you a little bit of time back for your day. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody. Bye. Yes, yeah, stay safe. Bye. Bye.